I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Yandere Simulator. There are a few things that I want to check out in this episode, so no more talking. I'm just going to show you guys what I personally want to see, so check this out. The empty husk in the art club has been replaced by the arts club leader, Gaiju. The player can interact with him, and he has voiced lines, but he will not react to murder or anything like that, so he's not very different from an empty husk at this point. Yandere-chan now plays new animations when she's around Senpai. Her animations will get progressively creepier the more time she spends around him. There are now five ambient conversations that occur at school between male students, one for each day of the week. Added the ability to decorate Yandere-chan's corkboard at home with red strings. Populated the art club with props, and added a kill the kill easter egg. It's pretty basic for now, but maybe one day I'll give it more depth. So those are the things that I want to check out, guys. If you guys are cool with that and you're down with that, everybody sit down, buckle the fuck up, because here we go. We got Kakona and her double dams throwing up the peace sign. We'll put that right over here. And then we got fuckboy senpai acting like he's reading a book. We'll put that right in the middle because, you know, he is our end goal. We got the red-headed guy posing like this. Swear he a model or something. We'll put him right here. And lastly, we got a case of pancake ass. We'll just put her right over here. So we can actually put a pin anywhere we want on this board so let's put one on kakona and then put a string to this guy then i guess we'll go here to pancake ass and then pancake ass to senpai bada bing bada boom that's how you place the pin anyway enough of that cork board mumbo jumbo the thing that i want to check out is what was once an empty husk in the art club has now been replaced with a guy who has voice lines he is the leader of the art club his name is gaiju or gaiju whatever his name is we are about to go to the art club right now and we're gonna see exactly how he sounds like. Oh. Hi. Hey, this dude got a smooth voice. Joining us? If you join the art club, you will not be considered suspicious when splattered with blood while you are wearing a painter's smock. Will you join the art club? Fuck yes, I will. Nice. I thought that was sushi, I'm not gonna lie, like salmon and tuna sushi. And then we got a little bit of this going on, I see you. Got a forest, okay, one with nature, I dig it, I dig it. Holy shit, that is pretty creepy and cool at the same time. The hell is that? Then we got a girl over here looking like she's doing some yoga, hey baby. And over here we got some clay sculptures, we got a bird, we have like a hamster or a guinea pig or a cat or some shit. And over here we got a snake that looks like my penis. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Okay, we've been to the art club, we talked to Gaiju, we did the activity. But now we can also do something. We can leave a note right here. And this is not Kakona's locker. This is the placeholder girl. The one that's shy. The one who had the skirt blow up like a balloon. We can leave a note. And we can say, I want to speak with you about bullying. Please meet me on the school rooftop at 7.15 a.m. And ba-blam. And then we're going to fast forward time a little bit. She is going to come up right about now. Where the hell you at? You grudge looking ass. There you go. She's right there. Come on, take a look at that note. Who the fuck is you? Get out of my way! I'm not even trying to look at you. Think you're all that. Come on. Pull the note out the locker. Yeah, you didn't see it the first time? Huh? What's this? You know what that is. You know exactly what that is. Read that. All of that. Lame. Lame? Girl, you lame. Okay, guys, so apparently I did this wrong. I'm a big bucket of fuck. We have to ask a favor of Masume. Tell her to go distract. I'll just pick the evil chick. And then we have to take a picture of the two having a conversation like this. And now all we gotta do is save the picture. And now Haruta is gonna meet us at the spot because now we have photo evidence of the person that she thinks is the one causing her to get bullied by Masume and the gang. So let's get it. So we are gonna meet about bullying behind the roof of the school, not on the school rooftop. She is not Kakona. Meet me at 7.15 p.m. Ba-blam. All right, here we go, guys. She's opening up the locker. Huh? Magically sees a note that was between her shoes. Maybe I should meet them. I found your note. What do you want to say? I'm sorry to call you here like this, but I can't stay silent any longer. I know who's responsible for what you've been going through. Please, take a look at this photograph. Oh, I can pick any photo I want? Well, I'm supposed to take a picture of Masume having a conversation with a random student. That's how you trigger the offer help thing. But what if I show her a picture of the pancake ass this from the nurse? This is the person who spread rumors about you and ruined your reputation. I'm afraid that they aren't going to stop until they've destroyed your life. So <laughs> what the fuck? It actually worked. What's happened to me? She got a case of the pancake ass. Because of this person. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. I need some time to 
think about this. G Goodbye. I can't believe that worked. I okay, mean, guys, I actually got to gotta do this one again this because I know I want it to be funny and I then, you know, submit the picture with longer. the pancake ass. But we have I to pick the picture of Masume talking to the redheaded girl this is the because after this conversation, this girl is going to be in, like, a mind slave state and she is going to go after the person who she thinks is spreading rumors about her. And I want to see that right now, so let's go. There you go, guys. There she is. So can we talk to her? Nope. Oh, there you go. She's getting up herself and I didn't even tell her to. But yeah, once you show her the picture of Masume and the girl that she thinks is spreading rumors about her she's gonna go up to that face she is about to go ham on that ass and here we go oh, holy shit. shit and she has no knife that's some Sharkeisha shit right there. I'm not getting involved with that. I'm getting my candy ass out of here. The next thing that I want to check out are the new animations when you're around Senpai. It says that the longer you're next to Senpai, the creepier you get. So let's see how creepy Yanchan can actually be. Okay, we got innocent looking Yanchan here. So, so far, everything looks pretty normal. And now she's grabbing the elbows, of course, because you gotta grab the ashy elbows. Now she's holding that heart. She's like, oh my god, I'm high as fuck. Oh my god, I love this face. This has to be my favorite Yandere Chan face ever. Just look at this face and tell me it doesn't make your day. Um, excuse me. Would you please stop doing that? You're scaring me. Ah, oh, I thought she would still be making that face. Damn it. I love that face. Who doesn't love that face? I'm going to put I that as my thumbnail my for this video. Again. That face is just too awesome to pass up. The next thing we're going to check out is the new Easter egg. It is right here. I personally have no idea what this is. I apologize for anyone who wants me to know what this is. It looks pretty cool. There's no, like, special power when I press control. There is, however, a big, long, veiny energy sword right here. So let's see what this bad boy can do. Surprise, motherfucker! <gasps> the hell? <gasps> Did I just slice their stomachs? <gasps> oh, shit! Hey, no! Get your ass back here! Get that ass back here! <gasps> Holy... Fuck, she does not mess around. Oh, no. Before she leaves. No! Oh, you mother. But anyway, guys, this is the Kill La Kill Easter egg. And we are definitely Kill La Killing. So the last thing that I wanted to check out was actually the thing that I wanted to see the most. It's these little rainbow-haired shit nuggets. They have one conversation each day per week. And I'm going to find out exactly what they are and when they are. So let's do this. Okay, so at lunchtime, we got this blonde-haired fuck standing right here. Evil red-headed okay. dude coming up. Explain it to me one more time. So, there are these invisible monsters that feed off of negative emotions. If these monsters grow powerful enough, they can influence human behavior, which results in crimes like murder. The fuck? There's a small number of people who have the ability to see and fight the monsters. Only females can have this power. The show is about the magical girls who can see and fight the monsters. Is that right? Their power depends on how many admirers they have. So the magical girls are usually pop idols. All of them are actresses, singers, models, super popular bloggers, and things like that. Their power gets weaker when they're far away from their fans. So the Japanese magical girls stay in Japan, the American magical girls stay in America, and so on. Are you getting all of this? Man, he looks like he's blanked the popular, fuck out out of his mind. They lose their power. So they have to juggle their public celebrity life with their secret magical girl life. That's where it gets interesting. The protagonist is a girl named Miyuki, who isn't a celebrity. She's just the most popular girl in her school. The other magical girls look down on her because she's nothing like them. The show's about Miyuki's struggle to cut it as a magical girl, even though she's relatively weak, and none of the other magical girls respect her. Trust me, man, this show is freaking amazing! You're freaking amazing. I don't want to spoil it, but it gets really good once Miyuki starts getting stronger than some of the veteran magical girls, and they start... Um... Just, just trust me, you need to watch this show. I don't know, dude. It doesn't sound like my type of show. Yeah, me neither. Up top. Come on, high five me, evil dude. Who has millions of fans because she's super busty. Ooh, busty? <laughs> Who's okay. busty? I'm, I'm a fan of the busty. What's it called again? Magical girl, pretty Miyuki. <laughs> this motherfucker you know, right here. Strike the pose when you tell me, dude. <laughs> if you saw the show, you'd understand. That's so cool. The conversations seem organic. Like, it's not just scripted. I like that. That's really cool. Like, one guy's super interested in it, and one guy's like, yeah, I don't know. That's not my cup of tea. I like that. That's a nice touch. Okay, so that was the conversation for Monday. Let's check out Tuesday. I watched the first episode, and 
I don't see what's so great about it. Oh, cool. It's like a continuation of the conversation from yesterday. It's really good about how that is dope. First season. That's lame, dude. I don't want to watch something that sucks for the first half. Yeah, me too. I could really no, relate to this evil guy. Get it. The first half of the show is I feel like I am this evil guy. Thinking that they're watching a typical magical girl show, and then BAM! The plot twists start dropping. <laughs> dude, BAM! Did you just spoil something that was supposed to be a surprise? Yeah, you little fucker. Yes, technically, but if you were planning to drop the show, then it was totally worth it. You need to understand this. Magical Girl Pretty Miyuki is a deconstruction of Magical Girl shows. Huh. Everything is called a deconstruction these days. What does that even mean? I don't even know, bro. It takes the concept of Magical Girls and then applies it to real life. Like, how hard would your life actually be if you really were a Magical Girl? That's what the show is about. I'm pretty sure this isn't the first time there's been a show like that. Yeah, yeah what do you gotta say about that? Miyuki does it differently. Trust me, dude. Trust me. Keep watching. You need to. Have you been watching it? Yeah, I watched a few more episodes. Still really cliche. Still a whole bunch of boring old tropes. Yup. That's what makes it so good. It lays out all these tropes, and then it subverts the tropes. Man, let me get in the middle of these guys. I feel like you're spoiling it for me when you say stuff like that. Yeah. I can't let you drop the show, dude. I need you to know that there's a payoff coming soon. I think it's a bad idea to intentionally make the entire first season of your anime really cliche and boring just so you can surprise people with a payoff that comes halfway through. That is totally true. Don't get it, dude. You just don't get it. The show's creators are brilliant. Geniuses. Whatever you say, man. I'll keep watching. But it's just because I'm invested at this point. Oh, man. I can't wait until you hit episode 7. I wish I could see the look on your face. Dude. It's just a show. Have you seen episode 7 yet? Yeah, watched it last night. Well, what'd you think? And? And? And alright. I saw that twist coming from a mile away. Oh! What? It was obvious, dude. That doesn't even count as a twist. No way! You're just trying to act like you're unimpressed. But I know it surprised you. Girl, please! Not really. They were dropping hints and clues everywhere. That was subtle foreshadowing. I'm beginning to think that we have completely different taste in anime. You know, that kind of reminds me of me and my friend. Like, he recommends me some stuff that he thinks I'll like, but he just can't accept the fact that me and him just have different taste in porn. Finish season one. I have to admit, it was pretty good. Dude, seriously? What was your favorite part? The episode where they all went to the hot springs. That one was great. Okay, yeah, but what about the character development? The plot twist? The subversion of popular tropes? The deconstruction of the magical girl genre? The deep philosophical introspection? Okay, I'm sorry, but who the fuck the talks like that? Well, she's my favorite character. But... but... deconstruction. Deconstruct this. Does the bikini model get more screen time in season two? <laughs> You're not worthy. You don't deserve to watch magical girl pretty Miyuki. Dude, calm down. I said it's good. Don't talk to me. Ooh, friendship over. We saw it firsthand, guys. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Yandere Simulator. If you guys have any comments, questions, challenges, or myths you want to submit for my Yandere Simulator myth series, make sure you leave them in this comment section below, and I will choose the most creative and unique ones. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is the dude!